Hey guys, it's me Rahul and this is bit of a different video than the videos that I usually do. So these are the top 9 Android apps that you must uninstall right now. First app on the list is of course, you guessed it right, it is Facebook and Facebook Messenger. Some of you watching this video might not agree with this, but the sad truth is Facebook app for Android is rubbish. I am not the only one who think like this, many of the reviewers have already talked about how the Facebook app is making their phone slow and reducing battery backup. So here are some alternatives to the official Facebook app. The most simplest and maybe the easiest alternative method is to use your browser. I recommend Chrome because it has some neat features here and there to give you sort of an app-like experience. So these are the things that you need to do in order to get that app-like experience. First log on to your Facebook account using Chrome, then you will see this request at the bottom of the screen. Just tap allow. So now Chrome will send you Facebook notifications just like its app. Another thing that you can do is you can add a shortcut to the home screen. For that, just tap on the Add to Home Screen option in the Chrome Overflow menu while you are using Facebook. If you really want to use an app made by Facebook itself, you can go with Facebook Lite. Another method is to use third-party clients. There are a few good ones that I recommend. They are Metal and Tinfoil. Both are really good and awesome applications. All these alternative apps shows you a mobile web version of Facebook. So you don't need that extra messenger app. Moving to the next type of apps that you need to understand right now, they are battery saver apps. There are only a very few battery saver apps that actually works and 99% of the battery saver, battery extender, battery doctor type apps don't do anything to make your device last a bit longer. Instead, these apps make your device slow and consumes a chunk of battery too. Unify and Amplify are some of the apps that I would recommend if you really want to extend your battery life. Currently, I am working on a video based on battery saver apps, so stay subscribed. If that video is already up, I will leave a card as well as an annotation on the screen. So the next one on the list are booster apps. I don't know why people still use these apps. Guys, it will not make your device run faster. If your device is not running on Android Jelly Bean or below, you don't need these applications because the Android OS's above Jelly Bean has a great memory management system. Unfortunately, operating system doesn't clean junk files that often, so I recommend you to use an app which has this junk cleaning function as a feature, for example, ES File Explorer. All I'm trying to say is don't install an app just to clean junk files. I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Next type of apps that I want to talk about are Bloatwire. You might be familiar with this term if you don't just watch this video. In case you don't have that much time, I will give a very simple explanation. Bloatwares are those unwanted pre-installed apps on your phone. Many of the Bloatwares are completely useless and it consumes a lot of battery and memory too. So just uninstall it. It is not an easy task to do. If you want to uninstall Bloatware, your device must have root access and you need a system app uninstaller app. I will leave a link to download this app in the description along with all the other links. If your device is already rooted, do the following. Open this app, enable root access, select the Bloatware apps and tap on uninstall. Next type of apps on this list are flashy keyboards. As an Android user, we like to customize everything on our phone including keyboards. There are some third-party keyboard apps on the Play Store that allows you to customize everything like theme, key tones, basically everything. One of the problems with these highly customizable keyboard is that it allows you to install themes for your keyboard. These custom themes runs on the background as a separate application even if you are not using that particular theme at that moment. So I recommend you to not to use these kind of apps. There are many good keyboard apps in the Play Store. The ones that I recommend are Google Keyboard and Flexi. I will not point my fingers to any of these fancy flashy keyboard developer because when I ask them why these themes run as a separate app and consumes a large portion of memory, they told me that common users don't really care about these things. They only care about how it looks and its features. I think that is 100% right. Next type of apps that I want to talk about are live wallpapers. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love live wallpapers. That is why I recommend and include live wallpapers on my monthly best apps list. I don't really use live wallpapers that often because live wallpapers consumes a large chunk of battery power. 
Live wallpapers are sort of like a game that runs 24-7. So if you guys want a good battery backup, say no to live wallpapers. Next type of apps that you really need to avoid using are flashy launchers, especially 3D launchers that have heavy transitions. Not only these are really bad looking, but also it consumes a lot of battery and CP power as well. So always try to use simple and minimalistic launchers that has good and useful features, for example Nova Launcher. Next on the list are so called antivirus apps. Some of you might not agree with this, but anyway this is what I have to say. I normally don't keep these antivirus apps installed on any of my devices because of many reasons. Reason number one being it consumes a lot of battery power. Number two, it will make my phone laggy. Reason number three is my main device is not rooted. I have a few other devices which are rooted but I don't use those phones for calling or sending emails and I rarely use internet on that device. And the last reason being I download most of my apps via Google Play Store. So, about 99% I am safe but if you are a person who has a rooted device and you download apps from different sources other than Google Play Store, you definitely need an antivirus. With that being said, nowadays antiviruses for Android are not just an antivirus. It is basically a whole security utility package. Speaking of downloading apps from App Store other than Google Play Store, last one on the list is of course unofficial app stores. Whether you are using these app stores for getting paid apps for free or you can't download apps from Play Store, these apps are dangerous because most of these third party app stores collect your private data and some of these app stores automatically install malwares too. So basically what I'm trying to say is don't use any other app stores other than Play Store and Amazon. If you are in a situation where your Play Store app doesn't work, first open the app info and clear all the data and open the Play Store and try to use it. If it still doesn't work, go to app info again, click on uninstall updates. If that too didn't work, uh, open Google app and if you see some message like update Google Play services, tap on it and update the Google Play services. But if these methods doesn't work for you, just uninstall all the Google apps and reinstall the compatible Google apps from the apkmirror.com website. In case you have a Chinese branded phone which doesn't have Play Store in it, then just do a Google search like this, G apps for followed by your device name and download the Google apps and install it. So that's been it guys, I always wanted to make this video but I didn't have enough time. But I finally did it, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, never give a big thumbs up and I'll see you guys again in my next video. Goodbye. Yeah. Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in I could swear that this room has been running out of air And now it's starting to spin